Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I want to start with a pop quiz. Hashem appears in the world. He tells people things, right? Sometimes he speaks to us as a nation. Sometimes he speaks to individuals, to prophets. If I ask you, when Hashem appears and says something, is there a theme that repeats itself most often? Like what is the most common sentence, commandment, guidance that Hashem gives us? It's an important thing to know, right? Because if we know that, then we'll know what Hashem most often wants from us. So I did this pop quiz on Shabbat for our friends, and they said, um, maybe it's the verse that says not to cook a lamb and its mother's milk. Well, okay, that's a good guess. That appears in the Torah three times. I pop quizzed Jeremy as well. I knew what he was going to say, but I still asked him, and I knew he would get it wrong. And he, of course, said it's to take care of the orphan and the widow. Which is also a good guess. That appears like three or four times in the Torah and many other times in the prophets, like maybe 10-ish. Okay, doing closer. He's getting better. The phrase that appears most often in the Bible as something that Hashem says to either us as individuals or as people is actually also in this past week's Torah portion. And Hashem says it to Yitzhak in chapter 26. And the verse is, al tira, do not fear. That is the most common thing that Hashem says to people. Do not fear. Hashem says it to Avram. He says it to Yitzhak. He says it to Yaakov. He says it to the nation when we're going to go into the land. He says it to Moses. He says it to Joshua. He says it to a few of the judges, to Elijah, a bunch of times to Isaiah and Jeremiah, and twice to Daniel. And that's a lot. That seems like Hashem is saying, notice this, notice this big flashing light, right? Here's an interesting fun fact, though. It's not only what Hashem tells us the most. There are search engines on the internet for finding biblical verses, and consistently over years, they've been finding that the verse that is the most popular is verse, are verses that say al tira. Last year was Isaiah 41.10, Do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Same in 2018, that one also won. In 2017, the top verse was Joshua uh, 1 uh, verse 9, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. So this is really a two-way street when you think about it. It's like Hashem wants to tell us this message all the time, but it's also the message that people most often seek out to hear from Hashem when they want something to meditate and hold on to. You know, there's a famous uh, passage in the writings of Rabbi Nachman. Jeremy made a beautiful song about this, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslov has this famous saying that the world, our lives, are like a narrow bridge. He doesn't say narrow bridge. He says a very, very narrow bridge. It's even worse, right? And he says the most important thing, the most important principle and rule in life is to not be afraid. I always thought that was a little strange. Like, isn't the most important thing to follow the Torah, be a good person? And if you manage to also not be afraid, then yay, happy day for you. But is that the main thing? But then when I realized this about it being the central message that Hashem gives out throughout the Tanakh, I realized Rabbi Nachman is not just saying something cute. He's saying something explicitly biblical. It would seem that Hashem is saying this really is the main thing. And now it's so interesting how when the Torah says not to fear, it might be, I think it's in a different way than the modern world sees it. A lot of people these days, they want to prevent fear by having safe spaces, trigger warnings. People wrap up their children in bubble paper so they don't experience anything hard or scary. But I don't think the Torah looks at it that way. Like Rabbi Nachman said, he didn't say, don't be afraid because the world is a walk in the park. In the park, everything's going to be great. Don't worry. He said, life is a very narrow bridge, meaning you could really slip off and fall into the abyss. It might not be a simple thing for you, but with all that, do not be afraid. So you can really see this the first time Hashem says not to be afraid in the Torah. The first time this verse appears, this phrase appears, is to Avraham in chapter 16. Hashem appeared to Avram in a dream and said, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield for you. Your reward is very great. And then they make a covenant. Now, what do you think is the first emotion the Torah tells us that Avram has right there? Right there in the same chapter, in verse 12, it says that a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, dread, great darkness fell upon him. Like great darkness and dread, that's about as strong of a term as I can think of for fear. So Hashem tells him not to be afraid, and the very first emotion he has is this horrible, paralyzing fear. And what does Hashem answer him? I would think Hashem would say, oh, Avram, we just talked about this. All is good. Don't be nervous. Everything's going to be great. What does Hashem actually say to him when he's in this dread? He says, know with great certainty that your offspring shall be aliens in a land not their own, and they will oppress them for 400 years. But after four generations, they'll return here. Well, that's not the classical kind of comfort that people look for. And it's interesting. He's saying, I'm not promising to you that everything's going to be okay. I'm telling you that there's a long game. There's a plan. 
How different from that is the modern way that we look at not fearing, where we just try to shield ourselves. Hashem doesn't say, don't worry, there's nothing to fear. He says, there's a lot to fear. Things are going to be hard. Fortify yourself. Choose to believe and know that this is all part of my plan. I have a close friend who survived breast cancer and was miraculously able to have a baby after all of the treatments. And I remember her husband speaking, they made a celebration of thanks um, and he gave a speech and he quoted Psalm 136, praise Hashem for he is good, his kindness is forever. And he said, don't understand that as meaning Hashem's kindness is just everlasting. What he said was that when you have the right glasses, the vision that's looking at things in a forever perspective, then you really understand the kindness. Because sometimes if you just snapshot a certain moment, like in their case, it was going through the diagnosis and these horrible treatments, you don't really feel the kindness, but when you look at everything in a broad span of time, the kindness becomes so much easier to see and to understand. Now in this past Torah portion, we read on, we read on Shabbat, it's interesting, Hashem tells Isaac not to fear as well. This is the second time we see this in the Torah. And you can see how Isaac lives this and it changes his approach to things that happened to him in his life. So we know that Isaac is digging wells and the Philistines fill them with sand. He digs another well and they come and bother him and fight with him. Finally, he digs a well and they just leave him alone. And he calls it Rehovah from the word Rachav, meaning broadness. He feels this expansive relief, like, oh, finally things are okay. And then out of nowhere, at that time of all times, Hashem appears to him in chapter 26, verse 24, and says, I am God, don't be afraid. Well, that's weird. Why now? Everything's okay. But then when you read what happens, we can understand that Hashem was giving him strength and courage to face something that was about to come. Because the next day they, he gets up and they dig another well and they find water. Great news. And then Avimelech shows up, the Philistine king, with his army and the army, the general and the entourage. Now, had Hashem told him, not told him to not be afraid, what would be his normal reaction? If we've been looking at the previous chapters, we'd say, well, this doesn't really seem like a friendly visit. This guy's been messing up his wells all the time. And he shows up after he finally, you know, dug these two new wells with the military and the general. And after all these altercations where Yitzhak had just been, you know, digging new wells and running away, you would think that when he sees them approaching, Yitzhak would make a run for it. Or, you know, maybe this time he's a little more confident. Maybe he'll be tough and try to fight with them and, you know, stand up for himself. But what happens is totally different. He just comes up to them with a question, almost like a curiosity. And he says, why have you come to me? You've always been, you know, chasing me away. Instead of running or fighting, he's just trying to understand with an open heart where this is going. Like implicit in his question is that he doesn't assume that they're coming not in peace, even though that's what it looks like. He says, wait a minute, didn't you not like me in the past? And it's like Hashem told him not to fear and encouraged him. It changed his entire posture towards life. Like instead of a fight or flight choice, I'm going to either run away or have an altercation, he just has this calm curiosity to see how things are going to unfold. I've been really working a lot on this in myself because I have a tendency to get really scared, particularly when it comes to mistakes that I make or that I'm afraid that I'm making. I'm always worried, like, what'll happen if I do something wrong? This really affected me when my kids had COVID because I was so scared, like, what if I didn't you know, keep them separate enough and somebody caught it from them? And then, of course, Noam's teacher uh, caught COVID and she's an older woman, like an amazing God-fearing person. And I felt so bad that she was sick. And she said to me, Tehillah, there are only two ways to look at life. She says, either you have Hashem or you have Hashem. Hashem in Hebrew means guilt. She goes, you can't have both. She goes, if you believe in Hashem, you won't be ridden with fear about your mistakes because you know that Hashem has a plan. And if you're busy beating yourself up and you're having Hashem, meaning you're having guilt and fear, that means that you're not really having Hashem in your life. Right? So she, <laughs> this really um, stuck with me as the Torah's antidote for fear and anxiety. And now, a couple of days ago, I received an email from one of our fellowship members that just is living this so beautifully. I didn't have a chance to ask her permission to share this, so I'm not going to say her name, and I hope that you forgive me for sharing this, but it was just so beautiful, I can't resist. So she writes to me the following email. She goes, Hashem is doing great work in us. Last week, I was crying out to Hashem for direction and balance, but mostly for the ability to rejoice in any suffering or disappointment. Uh, as we move forward to our next stage in life. And, so, and then Hashem sent me what I needed to achieve this goal. And I'm thinking, oh, great. I love getting emails with good news. I can't wait to hear what blessings came upon her. And then I keep reading the email and she goes, I got a notice in the mail on Monday that I had run a red light and I have to pay a $500 fine plus fees for traffic court. And then we had a sewer problem before Shabbat and found out that it'll be expensive to fix. Then my husband's van needed to go into the shop for work. 
And my husband has a dental problem that needs attention, but the building where the dentist works burnt down to the ground by an arsonist last week. And I have a problem with my toe that's going to need surgery and a tree is about to fall on our house. I want you to trim it, but it's really expensive. And then I went to the grocery store and my car won't start. So I go, oh, this wasn't a good newsletter. This is a prayer request. Okay, I get it. Okay, so you know she's going to ask me to pray for things to get better. I, I love that. Okay, I'm ready to pray. And then she goes, I keep reading. She goes on. She goes, but all is well in my soul because all of the Torah messages in this last week impressed upon me to decide to trust Hashem no matter what happened. So I told my husband, Hashem has given us a wonderful opportunity to just watch and see how he's going to direct us and work each issue out. And when it's all resolved, we're just going to laugh when we look back and think how foolish we were to have any qualms at all. We've had many times in this life when we were younger, but by walking with Hashem, everything was resolved. So we have no reason to doubt Hashem now. I was so moved by this letter because it just embodies the Torah truths of this message of al tirav do not fear. She internalized both the understanding that there's no reason to expect that things are going to be easy or smooth, but Hashem's message to Avraham is, you know, it's going to be hard, but there's a long plan. And she also adopted Yitzchak's outlook where he came to Avimelech, not with fear, but just with an open, curious heart asking, what are you doing here? How is this going to work out? What is going to be Hashem's resolution of this situation? And then it really did all work out. So this message really was a source, of, a source of strength for me this week, and I hope that it helps all of you guys be encouraged to face all of the things and all the challenges uh, that are going on in all of our different lives. So with that, I wish all of you guys a beautiful and blessed week. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds and nationalities. It feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to Scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feasts, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehillah is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Ari Abramowitz in Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.